first, and I just wanted to thank everybody for your prayers and support. For Daniel and Jace's dad, who passed away this week, um, they're at their grandmother's house uh, today. And, uh, you know, our government says uh, fentanyl is no big thing. No big thing. Our politicians, they say it's no big thing. But this is a, a time that we've personally experienced it. Jesus is the answer for the world, not the government, nothing else. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Amen. So I just wanted to thank you all for your prayer and support. The theme for October is Proverbs 11.30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. And I just want to step back to last month. Last month was the month of sanctification. And I don't know about you, but I've, I've gained some ground there. Have you ever done a dirty job? A micro dirty job? We've seen the TV show. Um, for an example, there's been times I've done, let's say, some drywall work, and I'm sanding the drywall overhead, and it's all landing in my face, and I'm filthy. It's in my hair. It's in my nose. It's everywhere all over my clothes, and it's just a terrible feeling. Or, you know, a lot of times, you know, I work on boats, I have to lay underneath the boat, Jerry knows what that's like, and you gotta pretty much sweep the ground with your body, you're filthy, you're laying in water, it's just very uncomfortable, we're grinding, sanding, fiberglass, and it's just absolutely terrible. But there's nothing better when, when at the end of the day, you go home, you get cleaned up. You take that shower, you get cleaned up, you get a good meal, you get some good rest that night. Well, that's how the month of sanctification was for me. All that sin that I accumulated throughout the year, the things that hindered me, I was able to get them behind me. The sanctification, the cleansing, and to move forward. I know, I know sometimes, you know, even when you take a shower, you still got a spot of paint left on you, and you have to work on that next time, or you still got something, something that's still hindering you, but there's more to do. That month of sanctification really yielded some good fruits. Amen. The theme of the week is also from Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. You know, I was up in Racine one day, was doing some work up there, and we were in a big parking lot, and we were loading up the trailer. And in the parking lot, it was, you know, of course, like any other parking lot, it's all concrete, it's all blacktop. But in the middle of this parking lot was a tree, and it was an apple tree. And it didn't look too appealing from the distance, but as I got hungry and as I got thirsty, I eventually went over to that apple tree and I grabbed an apple off that tree and I ate it. And it was absolutely delicious. And you would never think that right there in the middle of that parking lot, there's this tree that's producing fruit. Nobody else wanted to look at it or even touch it, but it was absolutely delicious. Isn't that how we are in God's eyes for saving souls? In the midst of a crooked a perverse generation, a sinful world, there we are to preach and share his word, to share the good news of Jesus Christ everywhere we can, whether it's convenient or not, whether we want to be there or not, whether we seem to think it's the right place, it's the right time. As we yield ourselves to God and God is able to use us, then we can share his gospel to see souls won. A lot of things in the world we can do. We can go to college. We can join the Navy, yeah. We, we can start a biz, we can, we can do a lot of things in this, in this life. But what is wise? Those things may seem to be wise in the world, but are they wise in God's eyes? God has a different plan when we follow him. Are we winning souls to Christ? The world even says, he who dies with the most toys wins. I remember reading that a long time ago, and I remember scratching my head and says, wow, that makes no sense, because I had just gotten saved, and I knew there was more to life than just that. If we endure to the end, we shall be rewarded with a crown of life. Get saved, stay saved, and see others saved. We've heard that before as our creed in the ministry. To evangelize, to educate, and equip is how we win souls.
From the book of Revelation, it talks about, in the book of Revelation, as it does in Proverbs 11.30, the tree of life. Well, in the book of Revelation, it talks about the tree of life still being there at the end. And that tree of life is the salvation of God. The tree of life. The tree of life still gives us life today. And that's the life that Jesus gave for us. He died, he rose again. That's that new life, that being born again life, that new creation, that tree that we are able to once again eat from. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life, and we can eat from that tree. From Matthew, so the, the, the title of the sermon is The Wise and the Foolish. And from Matthew chapter 7, and verse 24, it says, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, I will liken him unto the wise man that built his house upon the rock. Well, how is he going to hear these wise sayings from Jesus? Because we are there to share it with them. They will never know if we don't share it with them. We have to share Christ, the goodness of God, and lead them to repentance. The wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rains descended, the floods came. And that happens to us too. We're not exempt from it. We were not exempt from it in the Old Testament when they had famines. You know, we're never exempt from anything of the world. They come against us too. Trials, tribulations. But if we're wise, we build our house upon the rock. And when the rain descends and the floods came, our house is built on the rock and it stays. But the foolish build their house upon the sand. Now, as long as it's not raining, that seems to be okay. You know, I've got a leak in my roof. And I go up there and I patch it and I say, well, I'll worry about it the next time it rains. And I hopefully I'll, I'll get by and it, and it won't leak again. But if it does, eventually I'm going to have to replace the roof. But I have to go back to God. I always have to go back to God. I have to check with God. God, am I foolish? Am I a wise or am I a foolish man? And am I doing the right thing? Am I doing what you want me to do? Or am I doing my own thing? Am I looking out for my own things? Am I looking to build my own empire, my own kingdom on this earth? But I'm looking to build God's kingdom and win souls for him. Amen. Amen. Tree of life. Thank God. God made a way for us to eat. Eat of the tree of life. He died. He rose again. And he has called every one of us to preach his gospel. Because if they don't hear from us, who are they going to hear from? I know there's many other churches out there. But if, if there's so many churches out there and, and, and they're all doing good and we're all filling the quota, then why is the world in the shape that it is now? It's because we still have to win souls. I don't care what the other churches do, and I'm happy for them, and I'm glad for them, and I appreciate what they do. But we have a ministry of our own, a God-calling ministry of our own that we have to fulfill in Christ. We must be thankful. It takes a mind to be thankful. If we're thankful, it's going to produce fruit. If we're complaining with everybody else and not following Christ and looking to the things of the world, the fruit is going to rot, and it's not going to be producing good fruit for anybody. Amen. It takes wisdom to win souls. It takes wisdom. From the book of James, chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. But the wisdom that is from above is pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. This is our testimony. Blessed are the peacemakers. They which preach the gospel should live the gospel. Linda, I was excited about your testimony this morning because God's not done with you. He has souls for you to win still. We live the gospel. They must see Christ in us. And we must share Jesus in every way we can. The wisdom from above is all pure. It's all from God. In John chapter 15, verse 5, it says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me bringeth forth much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. And without Christ, all we have is religion or we have a philosophy. We need Christ to guide our steps every step of the way. 
from the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. It says, Let no man despise thee, despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in faith, in purity. Be an example of the believers all the time. Be thankful. Say what's right. Do what's right. The world is always watching. You know, it's a lot of things that we can say, and that'll be encouraging, but people really believe what you do. It's not just what you say. It's how you live your life. It's what we do. It's the actions that we take, how we raise our family, how we teach our kids. It's everything that we do. It's that testimony of Jesus Christ. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. In Jeremiah 31, it says, Know ye the Lord, know ye the Lord, for all shall know me. Well, how shall all know him? Because we preach it, and we teach it, and we share it, and we instruct with others. That's how all will come to know the Lord. We must live, share, preach, and show them the love of God and win souls. It's the love of God that wins souls. It's nothing that we can do. Like Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. The book of Daniel. I'm going to talk a little bit about Daniel winning souls. Chapter 12 and verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as stars forever and ever. Daniel was in captivity. He was in Babylon. Yet he did not complain. Daniel prayed three times a day, all the time. And God anointed him, gave him the opportunity to interpret the king's dreams and visions. And then God exalted Daniel, put him into a, a leadership position because of his faithfulness. He interpreted the king's dreams, and it changed the world. And it changed Israel, even though Israel was in captivity, it kept them faithful. He was still able to, to help win their souls by keeping them remaining faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. From the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 15 through 20, it says, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. A good tree, a good tree is thankful, and a good tree bringeth forth good fruit and is fruitful. Preach and teach the truth. Live a righteous, sincere life in front of everybody. Before God, before people. Share, teach, live the example of Christ in our life. Let God's life shine. Lift him up. Lift him up like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. And all that looked at to the serpent were saved after they were bitten. So the world has been bitten by Satan. And we have to lift up Christ. Because if we lift up Christ, he will draw all men unto him. There's nothing that we can do except live it and to preach it and to share it with others. Amen. From the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3 through 10. It says, Giving no offense to anything, but that ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor, by dishonor, by evil report and good report. As deceivers yet true, as unknown, yet well known, as dying, and behold, we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, and having nothing, yet possessing all things. We possess all things in Christ. We don't need to be satisfied with the things of the world. We have Christ. We have a joy unspeakable in our hearts, and we can share that with people. And people see that within us, 
and they desire to have it. You know, Jesus said they, you know, that they were first called Christians at Antioch, well, because they were Christ-like, and it's up to us to be Christ-like in everything we do. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. I don't want to scatter abroad. I want to be right in front of God. You know, in the book of uh, Matthew in chapter 25, it talks about 10 wise virgins and 10 foolish virgins. What made the ones wise that were wise was that they had the oil. They were ready. They were expecting to meet the bridegroom. And when and midnight came and the call was made to go out and meet him, the wise went out and met him, but the, the foolish had no oil in their lamps and they had to go out and get it. And the door was shut and they missed out. And I don't want to miss out. And I don't want to miss out either on the opportunity to share the gospel with people. You know, I have to, have to give of myself. You know, I can't have my own agenda and do my own thing. I've got to be looking first. Every step that the sole of my foot will take has to be claimed for the glory of Jesus Christ. Be an example of the people, of the believers. Follow me as I follow Christ. I know nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And that's what Paul said. Amen. From the book of Matthew, chapter 3 and verse 5 through 8. It says, Then went out to meet him Jerusalem and all Judea and the region round about Jordan. And were baptized of him in Jordan. Now it's talking about John the Baptist winning souls. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to him, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. John was preparing the way for Jesus. And that's our job. And that's our opportunity today to still prepare the way of the Lord. The Lord is coming. It's a crazy world out there. It's falling apart. There's a lot of evil in it. But God has given us the opportunity to live righteously and to be that example of the believers. Just like John, we can baptize and share the word of God with people, and we can only point to the cross of Christ. It's nothing within us, nothing that we can do right that can save anybody. But in order to win souls, we have to point them in the direction of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said to the men, the fishermen, follow me. To Peter, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Amen. Amen. From the book of Luke, Chapter 12, verse 45 and 46. And this is where we really have to put ourselves in check and examine ourselves every day. But, and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the men servants and the maidens and to eat and to drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in the day when he looketh not for him and an hour when he is not aware and will cut him asunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. This is the foolish soul winner. That's where we don't want to be. If we get slack, we get distracted. You know, Brother Rob taught a Bible study Wednesday night talking about love not the world. Well, the world is the distraction that gets in our way. We lose our vision, we lose our focus, and we start following the world, then we're not going to preach Christ, and we're going to be the foolish virgin. We have to preach to the world. Be instant in season, as Brother, Brother Rob spoke of the other, other night, Wednesday night. Be instant in season, out of season, whether you feel like it or not, when you want to or not. You have to be led of God to share his word, no matter what it takes, no matter what it takes. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me shall never die. That was my prayer before I got saved. I knew I was lost. I knew I was going to die. I knew I was going to hell. There was no question about it. I was going to hell, and I knew it. But I knew that the Word of God said, I can be saved. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Arise and awake, for now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. And that's because I've been around a while, and I can see what God has done in my life. And what he has done all around us. We see things today that are happening that I remember back in the 80s just thinking, no, that's not possible. That will never happen. But these things are happening today. It's because the world has gotten so far away from God 
And it's even because Christians haven't preached the word and been wise and spread the word and win souls. And I'm guilty of that too. Certainly am. But thank God for his mercy. I'm still in the race. I want to endure to the end and I want to hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. But I have to be a good and faithful and working servant to serve God. From Luke chapter 9, verse 26. And I, I learned this scripture a long time ago. The next two scriptures I learned a long time ago when I first got saved. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his glory and in his fathers and in the holy angels. I don't want God to be ashamed of me. I want God to say, I can use you. I can share the word of God with you. You know, we think about Legion. He was in the cemetery and he was with the devils. He was possessed of devils. And Jesus cast the devils out of him. And the world rejected Jesus and, and uh, Legion, told him to get out of the coast. And then even though Legion wanted to follow Christ and go with him, he said, no, you stay here and teach everybody. You preach the word. You stay here and share it among your family and friends. That was his calling, to, to share the word, to win souls. And that, even after he got saved, even though he had devils cast out of him, that was God's will for his life, to stay right there and share the word with everybody that was around him. Keeping our eyes on the prize. Well, we heard that earlier this year. I think it's on the front of the pulpit. We still have to keep our eyes always on the prize. Sometimes I am ashamed of myself and ashamed of what? But I'm not ashamed, I'm never ashamed of what God has done for me. And sometimes I feel like I can't do it, God, because I'm a sinner and I'm not good enough. But that's not God's will for our lives. God has commanded us to get up, to clean ourselves off from that dirty job, to get back in the race, to get saved, to stay saved, to see others saved, to evangelize, to educate, to equip. Thank God. Hallelujah. To share his word. His anointing is to preach and live the gospel without fear or favor of man. To see souls won to Christ. Amen. And here's another one. And I heard our founding pastor share this so many times. And I, it, just, it just flourished in my heart. It took seed in my heart and the branches that grew out of my heart. From Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Every time I read that Bible verse, I get excited because excited, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. This is what I want. And whenever I'm walking off the path, I need God to draw me back in, to forgive me. I don't want God to be ashamed of me. I want to be righteous before God, I want to be bold before God to share his word, to see souls saved, to win souls. Amen. Amen. You know, Kevin, I liked what you shared this morning about the, the Middle East and such. From the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 28, and it's talking about the end times as we're seeing surround us all these days that we're living in now. It's a good time to win souls. It says, and when these things begin to come to pass, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Yes, now more than ever, we should be winning souls. Now more than ever, we should share the gospel. You know what? People are, are scared, but they, they show it in different ways. They do the things of the world. They try to cover up their sin or they try to do things to smother out the sin. They willing, willingly ignorant or willing, willingly blind because they don't want to acknowledge God in all their ways because then they have to trust God and do something. But it's all up to us to win the souls to Jesus Christ in every action that we do and every word that we say, every step that we take. I want to share, uh, you know, in closing, I want to share a little, a little, bit, little bit of a conversation I had with my brother this morning. And he says, I'm going up to Carolina and I'm going to bring my chainsaw and I got to clean up my yard because the trees and everything else. And he was affected by that. And these are all the signs of the times of things changing. And he says, and then another, 
hurricane's going to come to Florida. And I said to him, you know, we've sat and we've listened to many sermons about trust God and trust God. Well, now it's time to get up and act and really trust God. Not just to listen to the sermon, but to get up and put the, put the sermon into effect, into your life, and trust God. So whatever happens, God's in control. And I told him, because, it, you know, I always uh, look for an opportunity to get a little dig in on my brother. And I said, it's only work. Bring it on. And it always aggravates him when I say that, bring it on. But it's true. Whatever God puts before us, he's going to give us the grace to see us through, to finish the journey. I want to hear good and faithful servant enter into the joy of the Lord. You know, I had a little conversation with Greg this morning. Greg, can I share your, your story this morning? He was telling me about the dash light that comes on on your car. That means you have to check something. And I said, you know what? I was thinking the same thing. And he, and he was talking about the gospel, how God turns on that light and you have to check your life. And I said, Greg, I was thinking the exact same thing the other day. I said, so we must be soul brothers. We were thinking the exact same thing the other day. I was thinking the same very thing. And I thought, I've got to get right with God on so many parts of my life. All the good things and all the things that I am now is because God's grace and goodness in my life. But there's so much more to reach for, to reach for the stars, to win souls. I have to come up closer. I have to cast my bread upon the water. I have to be bold and not ashamed of the gospel of Christ to preach his word, to see everybody else around us saved. I don't want my life at the end to be in vain when God says, what did you do for me? What did you give to me? Whose soul did you see saved? Did you have any influence? One plants, one waters, but it's God that gives the increase. Thank you for the sermon today. God bless you. We thank God for his truth and his righteousness and for his anointing upon our lives each and every day. Amen.